Our next speaker um, is going to be our last speaker before we go on a brief morning tea break. Um, so we have Sarah. So Sarah completed her undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering and finance in 2014 from the University of Adelaide. She also did an honours year of research in autonomous underwater vehicles. How cool is that? I don't really know what that is, but it sounds really cool. Throughout her studies, she applied herself to several extracurricular programs from starting the Adelaide chapter for RoboGirls. RoboGirls inspire and teach young females what engineering is about and how they can explore STEM careers. In her penultimate year, Sarah undertook work experience in the UK, so another international traveller, uh, with Stage 1 Creative Services, who specialise in design and construction of a range of projects, including theatre and film stage sets, art installations and structures, used in Olympic opening and closing ceremonies. Sarah was prepared, um, Sarah prepared some of the stage for the 2014 Sochi Winter Paralympic Games, and the majority of her time was spent working with the CAD team in preparing safe transport of the Jaguar Land Rover exhibition, which travelled internationally for three years. Sarah joined the Protected Vehicles team in Thales in 2015 and is now the self-funded research and is now in the self-funded research and development team. Please join me in welcoming Sarah. It was um, problem solving, there was a process, 
there was an analytics to it that was, you know, you had to work your way to get the answer. If you didn't get there, you can go back and work out what, what you did wrong and how you can improve the next time. So I used to um, ask my mum if I could enter these maths competitions that run every year. They're only about $6. Um, so I always got my participation certificate at the end, which didn't bother me, it just meant that I'd try better and more next year. Um, getting into uni, I did two degrees, but while I was there, I liked doing some busy, so I joined up for a few things. First being um, Robo Girls. Um, they just celebrated their 10 years, and um, it's pretty impressive. We've taught over 70,000 girls just in Australia. Um, Robo Girls went global, I think, a year or two after um, they expanded within Australia. So we have um, chapters with Europe, Asia, and New Zealand. Um, so that was really fun. I was just like, hey, have you all of you heard of Robo Girls? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> That's good. I was a bit worried about that. Um, next up was former SAE. So SAE stands for Society of Automotive Engineering, and they were the body that ran this um, project. Um, essentially, it was open to all university students, not just in Australia, but also globally. If you could afford to travel to Europe, to also enter their competition. Um, here, we were a bunch of students who would um, design, build, and drive these vehicles in a competition. So the competition itself was broken down into a business component, a technical component, and the performance of the vehicle. Um, they're not road legal, but um, a few of uh, would used to go up to the go-kart track to see if you get the fastest lap, and that's who we would pick to be our drivers for our competitions. So that was a bit of fun. Um, moving on to work experience. So part of the degree in engineering um, is 12 weeks worth of work experience. I got, was lucky enough to get six weeks over in the UK for the company's um, state of creative services. Um, this was one of the projects I worked on. The, this, so I'll just, there was two components, obviously the Land Rover vehicle and the Jaguar vehicle. Um, Land Rover was on a um, all-terrain style platformed um, stage. And the idea of it was to manipulate the car by going up and down um, into rough surfaces. It also had a um, rain shower, so it would simulate being out of any condition, and that's why it was wet in that photo. The second part was the Jaguar. The Jaguar was on a revolved table. Um, now, there's a great story on this. So, this vehicle, this is in a workshop that um, was attached to our office building. Um, all of a sudden, I'm working at my computer. Every guy just stands up and vacates the building. No idea why. Turns to one guy who's left next to me. I asked him, where's everyone gone? And he just goes, oh, we just got the delivery of the Jaguar. I was like, oh. I was like, well, how come you're not going? And he goes, oh, we'll just Google it. It's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, now the Land Rover had been delivered, I think, a week or so prior before I even arrived um, at that workplace. So I don't know, I think, don't have the same um, excitement, but the Jaguar definitely did. So after all that, I didn't actually do anything like the project because it was pretty well and truly designed before I got there. But I did get to design the stillages. This isn't what I designed, um, this is that Google image, but it's very similar. So we had to look into the um, size of the trucks that needed to transport the items, um, and if it needed to be freighted in other ways, the load it would take and then the size of our um, equipment that could be broken down into small pieces to be put onto these. Um, and then we also did a bit of Tetris to make sure that we could fit as much as we could into one truck before moving into the next truck, because you don't want to have five half of trucks when you can fit it in three. Um, the next project, again, I didn't get to work on this, but this was relatively um, on its way to being delivered when I got there. But this is um, the Russian icebreaker that was part of the Opening ceremony, which was opening ceremony of the Sochi Winter Olympics. Um, I got to work on the closing of the Paralympics, and that was to design, um, you know, to draw up the stage, which was a shape of Russia. It was a ramp up to it for all the Paralympians to come up and stand on at the end. So there's no photos of that. I couldn't find it on the internet, but I thought I'd put this on here. Um, it's quite impressive, actually. I've just that. There's the Point works, but you can see the red um, line at the bottom. That's the heart of the person. So they're quite, quite big. 
Um, another thing I wanted to do was work on the stage set for Michael McIntyre, his show in London. If you don't know who he is, he's a comedian. I didn't know who was until I got there. Um, uh, again, best photo I could find. In the background, you can sort of see a silhouette of a skyline, of a high-rise skyscraper skyline. I got to do that, so that's all MDF plywood. And the um, desk that you're sitting at is also had my cat name all over it, which is great. So after all that, we've now led myself to um, Victoria. So I um, took a, I applied for a graduate program with TELUS and selected to um, join their team, which is great. The grad program is a two-year program, and within it, there are four um, six-monthly rotations. So it's a great way to understand not only the products, but also the business. There are two main um, projects that come out of Bendigo, and that is our Bushmaster, which is the one on the left, and our Hawkeye, which is our newest little vehicle, which is on the right. Um, some of the engineering I got to do when I first got there was a, um, one of the problems I'm sorry, I got to sort of help solve was to do with this gas truck. So this is one of the lockers. There are six on the vehicle. Um, every locker has a gas truck, but this one decided to not behave. So um, you all actually have um, gas trucks in the boot of your vehicle. So the problem with this one is that it would bottom out, as the boys would say. So what it meant was when you go to close it, it was being extended past its lip like limitations. So when you went to close it, you would feel um, either you would feel a bit of resistance, but you also maybe hear a bit of knocking. Um, and that's not ideal. We obviously needed to fix that. Um, the short-term solution was to chisel out um, a bit um, more of the slot that it sat within. But it was up to me to see if there was a better way. So here came all my trigonometry. So um, there was pages of this. And I didn't actually get to finish, but I did leave recommendations for the next person to take on the um, task. So not only did I have to look, not only was I just looking at the size of the actual gas truck, I needed to also see, well maybe um, we need to move locations of our brackets. Um, there was, there's a few things here to look at. Is, is there a, um, is the sizing right? Are we buying the right product? Do we need custom make the product? or do we need to do something else? So, I don't actually remember the answer to this problem for this one, but it has been closed out, and um, we've had no problems since. Um, so one things that we do in our day-to-day, -day, um, we sort of listed them, because I don't want to just sort of involve you all in massive spreadsheets of data. But we do a bit of economics, a lot of mass models, um, quite a bit of scout, uh, tolerance stacking and world calculations. Now, tolerance stacking comes up a fair bit, and that's essentially where you have two parts, or you have several parts that need to fit. Um, but you need to know that the material itself has a dimension, but also has a tolerance. So we'll use this for an example. You've got the internal hole down here. Um, this is a dimension, but you also have a plus or minus, say maybe one or two mils. But then you have your connecting part, which that too has its own tolerance. Um, and you need to make sure that you don't end up with two extremes. And those extremes are, this part being as extreme large, and your connecting bit being as extreme small, and there being a gap and um, not connecting. And the other is the opposite. So where this is extremely small, and your other part is extremely large, and they don't, they don't sit in and they're at all. So that comes up a bit, and we need to make sure that we're selecting the right dimensions and the tolerances for our materials. Um, and then as well, calculations. Our vehicles are made of Special. Um, they do go under a lot of stress and strain. We do weld our structures together, and within that, there's stresses and strains of the material. There's heating of the material, so we're changing the properties. So it's understanding how the material is going to be used um, day to day, and if um, and if we've affected it, and how we can improve the strength. So I did want to leave you on weld calculations. So I'd like to leave you with this: the weld is one of problems waiting to be solved. I don't want you to be like, oh gosh, there's too many problems to be solved. But I'd like you to go away and think about how you can make something um, maybe a little bit easier or a little better for the, for the future.